We have had the privilege over the last few years of hosting one of the women of courage that are chosen each year by our U.S. State Department. Women of courage are women who called out an injustice, a wrong, a human rights violation, and who've suffered the consequences knowing it, faced it with courage, and are often under threat. We were chosen to host Susanna Liu from Malaysia. And the part about this that's been so important to us is the courage that we take from hearing the stories from Susanna or others who come. I want to thank each one of you for coming out. Uh, for me, it's really cold. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in freezing temperatures. I always joke with my friends that I am an accidental social activist <laughs> because they forcibly took my husband and so I'm forced to voice out, I'm forced to fight for justice, to fight for truth and to even um, make the police and government accountable to what they have done. The journey has been three long, difficult years and uh, at times, yeah, I have been followed by special forces and they've taken photos of me and uh, who I meet with, but I have also taken photos of them. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, uh, I took one photo of a suspicious person trying to hide behind the bookshelf of Borders Bookshop. And I sent it to the investigating officer and said, are these your men? <laughs> to let him know that I know what you are doing. Uh, that night when I realized my husband was disappeared, uh, I, w I went to make a missing person report. They ushered me into an interrogation room and I was questioned for five hours through the night. At 3, 3 a.m. in the morning, I said I have enough. You know, I'm not answering any more questions. I have my rights. Uh, the important thing is you go and find my husband with the police. They didn't seem to be carrying out a credible uh, investigation. And of course, when the Human Rights Commission uh, held a public inquiry, their final decision was that my husband and uh, a Christian pastor and another social activist who is a Shia Muslim were uh, victims of enforced disappearance. In February 2000, uh, 2020, just recently, our family filed a civil suit against 22 police officers that we, we think uh, are somehow involved in the, uh, the uh, kidnapping and also the government have uh, been uh, using uh, this platform to also uh, speak for others and to reach out to the fa their families uh, who are suffering because uh, their breadwinner has been taken away from them and uh, so how can they survive? And I use my knowledge and skill to teach uh, some of uh, these uh, single mothers and also refugees to, to make a livelihood, to teach them the skills and then I kind of rent uh, a little pop-up store in the mall and we sell the products. Uh, so we, we open a reading center to give them a space, a conducive space to study. Uh, and so we have volunteers come to, to teach them English. Even though we are frozen in grief, that means that we can't really grieve because we don't know the status, whether the, they are alive or they are dead or they are martyred. Uh, but uh, I still 
hold on to the hope that uh, they are alive. I pray that God will use me uh, in whatever way as an encouragement to others and also to continue the legacy of my husband to help the poor, the needy and the marginalized. Thank you for your